Hello, and welcome to this video demonstrating our new radon detector. The detector is pretty much the same as our previous versions of the CT007R, other than a nicer switch panel on top and the added ability to charge a unit whether the switch is on or off. In the previous version, the unit had to be on to charge. The body is still made of 3D printed plastic, as for us, it is the most cost-effective way of manufacturing it. We also now offer a plucked foam case alongside our professionally routed foam cases. This gives the buyer the option to save some money on the case if they desire. We would also like to demonstrate our companion app that goes along with all of our CT007 product lineup. We will start the detector in a low radon area to make sure that the radon detector is reading low. This will help show the difference in radon levels when using the graphing feature of our app later on. We can switch to the display between the long and the short average. The short average is an average of the last 15 seconds. While providing fast readings, this mode will also give readings that are slightly more sporadic and scattered. The long average will provide less sporadic and more accurate results over a 5 minute average. We will leave the detector running for a while to allow the readings to stabilize. It has been about 40 minutes. The counts are still reading very low, the long average is reading 0.4, and the total since we have started is at 1.2. The short average will bounce around between 0 and a few picocuries per liter. However, the short average isn't very useful in this situation. It is more directed towards sampling areas you are expecting to have lots of radon, under a slab of concrete or inside of a wall for example. Here we see the last 20 minutes of data. The response time is set to 600 seconds or 10 minutes. The average here is about 1.2 picocuries per liter. If we increase our response time, it averages our results out a little bit more. This gives us more accurate results with the sacrifice of some time resolution. If we go to a short response time, our results become quite jagged. Using our phone interface allows us to have features that would otherwise not be possible without using your smartphone. Features like the graph you see here and the location system that we will demonstrate later. We can also switch to displayed units from picocuries per liter to becquerel per cubic meter. We are averaging around 40 becquerel per cubic meter in our current location. Next we will move into the basement to see if we can get some higher readings. We have just set up in the basement. We will let our detector run for the next 30 minutes or so, then check it for higher readings. This screen here shows us the 15 second average, or the short average, the 5 minute average, or the long average, and the average since we have turned it on. You can also turn your phone's screen off to save your battery, however both the phone and the detector must remain on. Once again, it's about 40 minutes later. Immediately it looks like our 5 minute average has gone up. However, we don't know if this is a random spike of radon or a trend that we are seeing. To get a better idea of what is actually happening, we can look at our graph in the phone app. The graph does confirm that the radon levels have increased since the detector was moved into the basement. The detector was moved into the basement at about 5.20 p.m., the same time the readings on the graph increased. With this information, we can see that there is an actual increase in radon levels in the basement, not just a fluke on the local display. Another feature we have is the ability to change between our smart mode and the standard mode. Although there is not a big difference in the readings here, we will give a more in-depth explanation when we do the radon chamber tests. But for now, smart mode tends to be more sensitive to changes, while standard tends to be more accurate when things are in a steady state, however inaccurate when things are in a changing state. It becomes a trade-off, however our built-in display on the detector is always in smart mode as sniffing is the main purpose for this instrument. The next thing we'll do is turn off our HRV and open up the radon covers here in the basement and see if we can make the readings come up a bit, or perhaps lower. Who knows? It's about 40 minutes later and the level on our long average seems to be the same as before. One thing we noticed was the detector was reading really low radon levels right after we turned our HRV off. We think this is just because the detector got a puff of clean air. Another thing we noticed was that when our water heater was on, the radon levels were relatively high. We suspect that this is because the water heater was sucking some radon out of our basement floor. We will see if the graph backs up our theory. At around 6 o'clock is when we turned our HRV off and opened our radon covers. At roughly 6.20 is when we noticed the relatively high readings. Judging by our graph, this was not a trend, but to prove that we did in fact see some high counts, we can decrease the response time and we might be able to see some of the high counts that we are talking about. As we decrease the response time, the graph becomes more responsive, however, the graph also becomes more jagged as we are now seeing more short-term averages. Although the radon levels spiked, 
they were not a trend. Instead, we see when we set our response time back to normal that the radon levels, in general, have not increased by turning our HRV off and opening the radon covers. Instead, this is likely a random puff of radon, not the actual radon level in the basement. We also see that right when we turned the HRV off, the radon levels in the basement dropped, then rose back up to the levels we were seeing before. We don't know if this is coincidental or if something else we might have done in the basement actually caused this drop. However, once again, the radon levels in the basement seem to be the same as before regardless of if we had the HRV on or not. We will now move the unit back into clean air and make sure the radon levels come back down to normal. It has been about an hour. We have been sampling the upstairs air and the screen is telling us that we are reading 2.3 picocuries per liter. That's a little bit on the high side but seems to have just went back down a bit. We can check the graph and look at our trends. The graph shows us that the radon levels up here are quite a bit lower than what they were downstairs. The average is about the same as what we were reading up here before. We can hit the View History button to reveal the entire graph since we've started. There are too many data points to show on this graph, so some are combined. The bottom line on the graph shows the lowest readings we got during that time period, and the top line shows the highest readings we've received during that time period. To recap, at the beginning of the graph we were upstairs reading clean air. The graph then spikes to around 3 picocuries per liter. This is when we took the unit down into the basement. Our levels then surprisingly dropped for a while once we opened our radon covers and turned our HRV off. However, they almost returned to the same level as before shortly after. We then moved the unit back upstairs and returned to an average of about 1.2 picocuries per liter. The moral of the story here is that this unit is sensitive enough to tell you if what you're doing with your ventilation system is making a difference in real time to your radon levels. As our last part of this video, we would like to demonstrate our radon sniffing or source finding abilities. For that, we will move back into the basement. When you are actually looking for a source of radon, it will likely be in the tens, hundreds, or even thousands of picocuries per liter, so you will not have an issue detecting the radon when you are in the source. However, the 15 second average might be too long for actually finding the radon source. Instead, we will listen to the frequency of the beeps coming from the detector. It will take a little while to, uh, for the radon to go get through the tube and into the cell, but you can definitely hear the increase in the beep frequency. So right now, you know, you're in a in a radon source and our short average here is at uh, 240 picocuries per liter, probably going to go up a little bit more, 300 picocuries per liter. You probably wouldn't want to leave uh, the probe in there for an awful long time because that will build up a background and uh, make your subsequent um, <coughs> readings le less accurate. So I'm going to take this back out and uh, yeah that's how you find radon sources. Another thing we would like to mention is that our graph auto scales. Here we see the readings we were getting before compared to the readings we have just received. Here is the clean air upstairs, here is the basement air, here is the basement with both HRV and the radon cover off, and once again the upstairs air. The spike we see here in our readings we have just received inside our radon cover. We are now at a radon chamber. The detector is inside and the phone displaying the readings is out here with us. We are doing this so we can demonstrate the difference between our smart algorithm and our standard algorithm. We put the detector in the chamber about 10 minutes ago. We can see that the readings went up and stay consistent. This is what we would expect because there is a constant level of radon inside the chamber. If we change our mode to standard mode, we see that the radon goes up, but it keeps going up for a while before the readings stabilize. Once again, this shows that the standard mode is good for reading steady state levels of radon, but not changing levels due to the lag it has between changes. We have now taken the detector out of the radon chamber. It has been about 10 minutes and you can see that the radon levels drop to almost zero immediately upon taking the unit out. That is in the smart mode. If we switch to the standard mode, we will see that the graph starts to drop, then tapers off and stays at about 50 picocuries per liter. What you will notice is that the readings are much more steady, however you will also notice that it is now showing a consistent 50 picocurry per liter background in an area where there is no radon. You would still see changes in radon levels, however you would need to subtract the 50 picocurry baseline. Smart mode will come back down for the most part and will be more responsive to changes. 
will also have some jitter. It's up to you to decide which one you want to use. We prefer the smart mode as we are interested in detecting changes quickly. The display on the unit itself shows the smart mode. Another cool feature we have when connected to our mobile app is the ability to click on exact points of our graph and see information like time and location. The location is shown on the map and we can also see the satellite images of the area. Although designed primarily for our gamma detectors, this feature can still be useful to keep track of where your readings are from if you happen to forget. Thank you for watching. That concludes our demonstration of the CT007R. More information can be found by following the link in the description.